Daryl, do you want to do us the honors of the intro? Do you are know we what going? it is? Are we rolling? Is everybody rolling? Yeah, do you know what it is? No. You could double check it. Oh, yeah, he doesn't rolling. watch this. You know what? You don't know the intro? He's not a fan. Uh-huh. Family, welcome to another episode of Working on It. Because I figured saying. you were listening to it. Sometimes you don't. We have the, the lovely, you guys amazing. Have changed a lot since the first time I was listening to it. <laughs> really? Yeah. The show. We're in our in what? This way? is the third set in the best way. Third I don't set. Well, we're know. getting more successful, so we had to switch it up. Daryl Sabara, welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. My husband, love of my life. Salud. Oh, we're cheers. Cheersing. Love my mm. life, my baby daddy, huh. my world. Baby daddy. Speaking of baby daddy, you guys you brewing up another one? When I think? got baby fever. You do. I do. And I've been asking everyone, like, do when you? should I have my do I have baby? Does. Yeah, no, I'm there. I definitely there. had it before you, though. We, Yes, you did. You had it a couple months before me, and I wasn't ready when you was like, started. Whoa. I was, I was like, like whoa, Riley's not even a year yet. And then, honestly, it's like the day you turned a year... I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Oh and then we had to wait. Um, yeah, so I had baby fever first. I was like, mm, ready, ready for another one because I want four and I'm 28 and I want two under 30. I think that would be really nice. I think that would be nice. Uh, welcome, friends and family, to Working On It Pod. Uh, this is uh, your guest, Daryl Sabara, here with uh, the lovely host of the show, Working On It, Megan Trainer and Ryan Trainer. Hey, guys, welcome. Hi. <laughs> that was a good, that was a great intro. I like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's nervous. I never see you nervous like this. I'm I'm not really nervous like this a lot anymore because my days are filled How with cute just. How is he? <laughs> I've been on on camera in so long. It's so yeah. weird. You, Everyone knows how weird I get in front of a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Inside joke. Inside joke. Nobody gets only, it. Only like reality cameras. Once that, you know, yeah, the yeah, director, yeah. the, the DP. Honestly, that's what else. it is. It's so, it's so weird. In front of like a, a movie camera or, a, you know, if, you're do, if I'm doing something on a set, it's so different than like right now, just like at our home. Because you have to be yourself. <sighs> so nerve wracking to just be myself. <laughs> I don't know oh, how. Once you just realize like, oh, nobody cares. Like, then you, you're better at it, right? You never yeah. got scared of doing this podcast. What do you mean? I hated the I first, like, 10 episodes. Really? Dude, I, it was I wouldn't so say tough. scared, well, but... Well, I just didn't know. I'm, I'm being comfortable being sober. I hated being sober, and I hated... I didn't know how to be a person. That's right. And my anxiety yeah. was through the roof. You quit boozing, my medicine went away. Anxiety skyrocketed. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm kind of, you know, mellowed out, feeling good. We've been working out together. That's been, you know what? Uh, I hated leg day. Now, love it. Does it feel good? Does it feel good? It feels great. Yeah. The next, like, couple days afterwards, you're like, yo, I'm strong. Like, when I saw you yesterday, walking from (laughs) your, from your house over to the car, I was like, who is that guy wearing glasses? Like, (laughs) you're so skinny and, like, you just stand up straight. Before, it was just always like, oh, fuck. This banged shit. up yeah. yeah yeah shout out rebecca crushing it yeah. dude Rebecca's my the best. trainer she's the greatest you saw her on an episode here or if you haven't check out working on body uh, working image on, uh yeah i think body it's image. body image that's the one yeah, she's yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> shut up you don't know because you don't watch yes i do <laughs> sometimes uh, uh anyways today also today's we're... friday oh yeah oh, and pizza, pizza day, day. Dude. Whoa, whoa, whoa. if you want tips and tricks on how to eat pizza in a healthy way I'll let you know right now. Ready? Uh, you start with a fat salad. Eat yeah. a bunch of greens. Fill up on a salad. Fill up. You could never go into pizza starving. Dangerous. Because you will eat until it hurts. When I fill up on my salad first, Christy taught me this. Check out Working on Nutrition with Christy. Um, filling up on that greens on that salad. You go in like, oh, okay, I'm pretty. I'm almost full. So I could do a little few pieces of pizza instead of the entire box. Interesting tactics. You're I f- welcome. I fill up on wings and then I go... I'm going to save a couple mm. more wings f- to go with the pizza. You tell me hurts after. Probably not the move, not huh? Not the move. Not good for you. <laughs> it's a not good, good I feel you. like it's a good step between eating. Like for me, I used to eat the whole pizza 
and then the Fresh dish. Brothers, the deep dish, all, all the pizzas, deep mm -hmm. dish, whatever it came. Uh, and then I was like, oh, they got chicken bites. I'll have some chicken bites first, and that'll stop me from eating the whole pizza. So then I ate about half the pizza, but then all the chicken bites, and now I'm on the salad trick. And last Isn't time I had fantastic? three pieces and was like, you know what? That was one piece too many. I could have just had two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to test that. <laughs> I'm going to test that out again Kelsey tonight. Forever. <laughs> I'm down <laughs> to 157. Oh. I'm, like when I Before I got pregnant with Riley, I was 185. So I'm already lost like two pregnancies already of like weight wise. And so I'm feeling great. And that's also why I'm like, baby number two, let's go. Let's go. Like, yes, I have an entire album that I'm writing right now and a book and hopefully a TV show. But nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. All right. Not even like pregnancy. That, yeah. I can I mean, do it, bro. Whatever. Kids, babies are pretty awesome. You know what? Can't it's gonna, deny it. All that work is going to be hard even if I'm not pregnant. Right. So why not just add what I want to do and have a bunch of babies to so it? No, another little bundle of happiness, dude. There's a big belly. Is Ry coming. Riley needs a friend. Riley he's, needs he, a friend. He's honestly getting to this point right now. He's, he's walking lonely. around. He's running. Like yesterday, he galloped. I saw him. Yeah. He was galloping. He was like, oh, I can go faster now. And I'm too slow. Like he, he needs a friend. To <laughs> he's like, rocking shoes now. That's yeah. pretty it's so sick. cute. Because dude, he's like got little cuts on his toes. I'm like, uh oh, he's going too fast and too hard. What's awesome yeah. though is that he just like he gets up and keeps going. Like yeah, he's nothing strong. stops him. Yeah, he's the best. He needs friends though, so we're gonna make them. Okay. 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 And tonight's the night. Okay. Because huh? yeah. I'm ovulating. That's on right. The fourth. Yeah. Uh, so yep. mm -hmm. tonight's the night. Yeah. Right after pizza. <laughs> We're going to try again. <laughs> so this episode right. is uh, working on child acting. Is yeah. that what it's called? Child acting? What do you want to call it? I don't know. Working on being a child actor. Being a child actor. I love that. Featuring Daryl Shabara. But he's no longer a child actor. Like, uh, yeah, that's true. That's working, a good point. Working on. Working on a working title. No, because like <laughs> being a child actor affects you for the rest of your life. Am I wrong? I guess we can get into it. Before before yeah. that, do we uh you guys wanted me to watch this Harry Styles uh, yes, please. music video? Oh yeah. yeah. I just we need love to, Harry Styles. We'll probably have to, like, Harry Styles cut on all this shit out, but, like, my managers manage vibe. Harry Styles, so in my let's mind we're brother and sister. Yes. So As my, it oh was. my big brother released a music video today. Mm -mm, and it's so good. Turn it up. Come on, Harry. How do they do it? Bro, you have to wear this for Halloween. Megan. <laughs> Sorry. He's an art piece, dude. He is. Yeah. Do you think that hurt when she fell? I had to. This is my favorite look. Oh, sick. Take it off, daddy. Ow. <laughs> That's how hot guys take their shirt off. Dude. It's the cross on like that. Yeah. I've never once been like, ooh, cross. <laughs> okay, boxers. I was confused here. I was like, what are those things? Is it like a playground? I don't know. Like, whose brain was like this? Sick. I wish this was the verses. I wonder how many steps he got in that day. Yeah. <laughs> What's your Fitbit say? Yeah. 
I love Look at that I love. <laughs> Where's my wallet? <laughs> Just so free. Yeah. Wow. Just what a happy boy. Just the best. What Just, a great song. Oh, he's so cute. That's a banger. Just another one. Just another one. Just another one for Harry. Love you. As it was. Yes. As it was. Yes. I'm yeah, getting dude. you that I outfit like it. for yeah. Halloween. Fuck yeah, dude. I'll rock the shit out of that. Do some fake <laughs> How tattoos. How many people though. are going to wear that? So many butterfly people. tattoo. I wish yeah, I could his pull tattoos are tasteful. They're nice. I'm just not cool enough. Next you life. Could, you could do it. Next life. Next life. Whatever. Just gotta figure out what you Welcome want, back. and then stick to it. You know. I do. I just feel I like so I would get one, and then I go, yeah. ah, I don't like this anymore. I'd be like, fuck, yeah. damn it. Yeah. Yeah. What was I thinking? Like a, yeah, it's not like a piercing. You just close. Yeah, it up. you're like dyeing your hair. It's like, all right, and then on to the next. It'll grow back. Oh, man, I was looking at old photos. <laughs> I got. A, I don't have my phone on me, but like the like a, almost a year ago, we dyed your hair like silver. Pink? Yeah, silver. yeah, yeah. So good. <laughs> He looked I was terrible. having a breakdown. Yeah, he looked. <laughs> he was just looking at himself like, "What was it, it is was, happening it wasn't to me?" Good. Quarantine. <laughs> um. All right. Child acting. Yeah, yeah, being a childhood actor. I mean, here's the deal. Like, we were just mega fans of Spy Kids. Honestly, Chub, Chub, cool. chubby kids. Chubby kids just wanted to be a spy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to have the whole visual. Why, yeah. Also, Uncle Steve, like, who you important? know, because we was running around shit, but I don't know. I was just like a cute little chubby kid with them. Um, we were. I feel I, like well, because we like cute. seeing you is just like. I was like, oh, I could be a spy too. Like, yeah. you don't have to be, you know, um, I don't know. You were just a relatable kid. Like, cool. Yeah. You had warts, man. So did yeah, I. Yeah, you had like you a warts? flaw. Yeah, fuck I, had, I, did. I had warts on my toes. Dude. We were I nasty. To I had a toe We were wart. always outside, always playing with the toads. You know? the I don't shower. think, honestly, <laughs> guys, I don't. <laughs> I don't think I knew what warts were until they like put fake warts on me. I'm like, what is this? Really? Damn. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't know what a you wart was. You were a clean kid. Yeah, I guess. Did you go outside a lot? Uh, we were like in the woods. Yeah, yeah you guys. You guys had shit. nature. I grew we up. Nature. I grew up in Torrance, right. California. See, not, you didn't have that. Not a lot of nature. Yeah, we were like hiding in bushes that like. Yeah, no. I didn't just constantly had poison ivy. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah no, all I ne the time. never had poison ivy. Never, you never had stung, poison ivy. No, I've never been stung Bless. by a beast. What? I'm like, I'm gonna go find some and rub it on. Yeah, fuck <laughs> you. Everyone needs to experience. It's a nightmare. He just, had his whole can't... face. He's allergic to it too, so it's yeah. half of his face. Aren't we was all just... allergic? Got poison to ivy it? on my dick once. Yeah, he did. I don't know how? We all saw touching it. Like you went and we all saw with it. He was like, and then... Dad, and we were all there, and we were like, oh, there's a bump there. Were you like peeing in the bushes, and they were like, not there, son, that's poison ivy. No, it was probably on his face, and no, they like, touched it. Any, any time, yeah, if, you, if, you're just, if you scratch it, and you it scratch somewhere like else, that. it goes to the next spot. It's Yikes. horrific. Okay. You ever had like ticks sucking on you? Nope. Dude, we grew up in the woods. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're so awesome. So great. So spy life looked intriguing to you guys. Yeah, you we guys were like, oh, I want it to be clean. Woods. I want to be a spy kid. And Uncle Steve got me like a spy kid set for Yeah, we loved really? gadgets too. Like the gadgets oh my are God. sick. It was the sickest wow. thing ever. You guys just missed out on the McDonald's toys. I did because we didn't have McDonald's. Because you guys yeah. didn't yeah. have McDonald's. Yeah. All I remember like being a kid was like I felt cool because I grew up going to McDonald's all the time. Really? That when... I was in the drive-thru and like in the toy box was a, yeah. my toy. I was like, well, it was pretty cool. So you went, that would be you, did you go knowing it was there? Um, should we get into some backstory? <laughs> or I just have, I just, question. I just, <laughs> no, because I have like the a fuck? long, I have a, I have a long answer. Well, shall we start from the top? <laughs> I have a long answer and I have Speaking a, of McDonald's toys, <laughs> yeah. I was a young, young boy. Yeah, what? Okay, where would you like to start? Well, no, if we're talking about <laughs> child acting, then before Spy Kids, I was up for like three McDonald's commercials. Okay. Oh. As, a young, this is important. as a young kid. Yes. From like three to six, like yes. every, uh, those three years, I got to the end of like between me and another kid for being in a McDonald's commercial, and I didn't get it all three times. Damn. And, and then Spy Kids happened, and McDonald's also <laughs> is the reason why like, we had an idea that the movie might do well because I guess someone from like McDonald's corporate came to the set of Spy Kids One, like the first two weeks of shooting, Sick. and they like looked at the set. This is what I remember. I was seven, so like my memory could be weird. But anyway, he looked around and was like, "Yeah, okay." And then you know how in the uh, like we make the microwave my meal, scene, yeah, 
it becomes a Big Mac. Yep. So I think the McDonald's guy was there to be like, all right, yeah, you can use a Big Mac and fries. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so once that happened, then I feel like everyone on set, like the vibe changed and it was like, oh, this is serious. like a serious movie. Like we actually <laughs> have to, you know, like this is get it. Impossible so, now. so it felt <laughs> kind of like an indie movie. It felt like an independent film at first or something. Like it didn't feel, was it always that or did it just, did it like, so it just became this mega franchise. Yeah. After yeah. the first movie. What happened in the beginning was, so I met the director, Robert Rodriguez, when I was six. And this was like a six-month auditioning process where for six, usually like you go out on an audition and then like the next day or a couple days later, you get a callback. And then the next day or a couple days later, they tell you like if you got the job or not. Spy Kids was like going in once every month and like just doing it again, just reading the lines again. And then like Alexa and I met and I read with different Carmens and she read with different Junies and then so eventually trippy. we got together and- uh, That's so mind fucking too. I mean at seven, six, seven, you know, you don't really know how mind fucking it is. You just go and, and I always had a great time and Robert was always really cool and made it fun and um yeah and then after six months we did a screen test and they like dyed my hair dark because i was supposed to play antonio banderas's son and so they're like well you have to look like him so we're gonna dye your hair black and my hair was jet black <laughs> my eyebrows i think were still red and it looked kind of silly um and when i got it they were like yeah we're not gonna dye your hair we're gonna dye her hair and, so did they yeah. let your hair grow back or did it was just like it was like wash it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wash out shampoo. Okay, good, now, when you're six like, years old, crazy. are you like aware that you're an auditioning process? And like, I feel like I'm six years old. I'm just like playtime toys. Because you, didn't he say he talked about rockets with you or something? He just, um, it was the first time that, and you know, as I got older and I went on more like director meetings. Like, even as a kid, it's funny. It's like, as an adult, when you meet a director, you want to work with somebody that you can like establish a relationship with that that you'd be comfortable working with them for a long period of time so he basically just like made me feel normal like a regular kid and was like can i have a conversation with this kid and like can we get through six months of a movie together and so when i went in there to meet him for the first time it wasn't like okay sit down read your lines like you're a robot he was just like hey like how old are you what uh what do you like to do and at the time i was building like a flying car in my backyard so, uh, Sick. Sick. yeah, I think I took apart like <laughs> rollerblades and like got the wheels and I'm like, those are going to be the wheels. And I told him all about how I was going to make this flying car. And I think I just made him laugh and then he was like, okay. And we read those lines and that That's was it, awesome. you know? Well, I'm actually making a flying car. <laughs> He's yeah. Like, I'm busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, You're yeah. smart. You're a smart kid. I guess. We were like, <laughs> you know? I dare you to eat that caterpillar, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we were doing. The only Justin. thing I was building was Bionicles. I was like, can't do it, Dad. Yeah. Fix, <laughs> fix it. Did you go straight to Bionicles? I started with Legos, Legos. And then moved up to Connects and then moved up to Bionicles. I don't know Connects. It's just uh, Bionicles. We were outside. <laughs> Missed out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were in the woods. Uh, Sick. Okay, so then you got the part okay. and then you were Got the part. Oh, year right. Old? So, so the first couple weeks, we had like a month. Before we even got to Texas, we shot all the movies in Austin, Texas. And like a month before we moved to Texas, we had, Alex and I had gymnastics training. So we Sick. went to like this gymnastics Was coach. it fun? It was so much fun. It was like getting to, like, you know how we go to the trampoline dodgeball place? It was like yeah. getting yeah, yeah, to yeah. go there. Like have, you, I, we had to be there, you know? It was like uh, a couple hours every week of just like playing on trampolines and uh, not being scared of heights and stuff. Uh, Cause then when we got to Texas, they put us in like harnesses and mm -hmm. flew us. So around. you did all your own stunts. I didn't do all my own stunts, but but a decent amount. I did a lot of stunts. I had these awesome stunt doubles. They were twins. Their names Aww. were uh, Houston and Kanan. And um, like that's sick. I <laughs> I think like I don't know how much we can put in here, but <laughs> I'm, like the things that like I couldn't get hurt doing, like when I had to like jump off of a boat into the water, I didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Really? Like, he's in Canaan. Put on a red wig, and Damn. you do that. And they, everyone was always so safe. But it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. the times where it's like I could have gotten hurt. I think that makes sense. That's what the acting's all about. That's what a stunt double's for, right? They're just willing absolutely. To it's get just weird to up. think about as an adult now that yeah. they hired two seven-year-old kids. Children, and they're like, <laughs> imagine I was a stunt. No one got hurt. No one got hurt. Daryl, save right. that pretty face. Get in there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but uh, yeah, so the so in the beginning, it was like it was like going to camp. You know, it was like I was learning to fly, and you know, like they put a fake jetpack on me and put me on wires, and like I got comfortable in a harness, and we did a bunch of costume tests and and uh, camera tests, and then McDonald's came. When you say came. costume tests, you mean fittings? Yeah, fittings. They were kind of also figuring out because um, Robert just like drew everything. Wow. So he had all these drawings and he had like all these moldings of like the thumb thumbs and wow. like he had all the characters from his childhood that he was bringing to life for this movie. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then the movie started and then McDonald's came and then like everything was kind of cemented and like, all right, this is the vision for the first movie. But the first movie came out and my favorite story is when you said you went to the theaters to watch it. Uh, yeah, so the first movie came out. The The most fun part was that the trailer, um, and this is why when we go to the movies, I'm like, I have oh, to watch the is. trailers. The Spy Kids 1 trailer was on The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. So it was like, I was going to see The Grinch with Who Stole Jim Christmas Carey. with Jim Carrey because we all did yeah. because that movie was iconic. And before the movie started, the Spy Kids trailer came out. It was the first time I saw myself like on the silver screen. That's pretty and insane. I like my memory of that is like watching it. And as I was watching it, I was just like standing up because I was so <laughs> excited. You know, it's like when we watch like, Riley, just like get yeah, excited, yeah, yeah. baby Einstein, and just stand up. Yeah. Out of nowhere. <laughs> I was just doing that. And um, and then after it ended, the a person sitting next to me was like, whoa, was that you? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then How, went, old How old are you? How old are you? Seven. Right there? Seven. Yeah. Oh, no. Maybe I was eight. I was eight. That's yeah. insane. <laughs> yeah. And then we watched The Grinch and The Grinch was amazing. And yeah. And then the movie Just came out. standing up. Yeah. The movie came out I a couple months it. later. The first screening of the movie was in Vegas <laughs> at the Paris Hotel. <laughs> I'll never forget, like, being in a casino <laughs> at eight. <laughs> this is so like, bizarre. I could not imagine. Yeah, you've seen so much shit at a very young age. Just surrounded by you're just surrounded by adults. Yeah. Being a child yeah. actor, you had. But I, I have to say, I always felt very safe. There okay. wasn't. There really wasn't a time. Like I'm so lucky that I had the experience that I did, and I think um, it's why I like you know didn't are get into are. drugs. And yeah, stuff, that's you know, because I was always very safe. Yeah, when we talk about when you and I talk about a lot of actors who were your age and who were popping at that time, I'm always like, where'd they go? Where'd they go? And it's sad to hear how many like went to drugs well, or went to have well, a really I tough life. I like to look at it as like, I always, I always knew I wanted to be an actor. Like at, I remember at three watching TV and just like wanting to be in the TV, wanting to be in the commercials, wanting to be in the, a Power Ranger, wanting to be in the TV shows. And I always really wanted to do it. And I'm really lucky that I found that out at such a young age. And I think a lot of kid actors um, think that it's what they want or uh, somebody else think that that's what they want and it's not what they want. And I yeah. feel like that might have a reason to, that might be the reason why they go off in the other directions. I was really lucky at like, I just wanted to keep getting better at the craft of it yeah. and like being different characters. And, and what a fun like first movie to do where like you're a spy and you're having like a great time, you know, it's like I mean, yeah. Dakota Fanning's first movie was I Am Sam. That couldn't have been a lot of fun to do, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like that had to have been yeah, that's pretty painful yeah. in some on yeah. some days. Uh, my days were like, is today the day we're going to play with Silly String? You know, yeah, yeah, is yeah. Today yeah. the day I'm going to get to fly. True. Like, you're just kind of fucking around with a bunch of fun stuff. Yeah. And I learned a lot because I was around a lot of really talented people and uh, you know, Robert is so talented uh, and creative, and then all the actors in the in the first movie specifically too. All in all the movies, um, but the first movie like had Alan Cumming, who was Floop, and like he's a you know a Broadway actor and and uh, a phenomenal actor. And um, I never felt like I was acting in that first movie. I just felt like I was. You were just living. I was just living. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. When did um? When did was, you that know? was that was like the most fun one to shoot the they, first one. they were all fun in their own ways the first movie just um because it was the it was my first movie uh i didn't have anything to compare it to so then the right. other two i had to compare to the first, first one, one and where there was like no pressure and then when the first movie came out and it did really well um my whole life changed it was when like, did you know it did really well 
Like, did they give you a call and they go, guess what? Did very well. Um, I don't remember a phone call of them saying like, hey, it did really well. But like my life just got really busy. So I missed a lot of school. Like as soon as the movie came out, I went on a um, you have tours where you go yeah. and you sing um, actors for a movie, even at seven, have press tours. And so uh, there was a car in the Spy Kids one movie called the Azuzu Axiom. I don't even know if Azuzu is still a car company. And I don't think they make the Axiom anymore. <laughs> like, but it was like the car in the movie. And yeah. so I basically went around 10 cities in nine days to different malls promoting this car. So I like went to the mall, like sat behind a chair, signed autographs. Uh, and See, I didn't yeah. know people did that on our island. Like nobody really goes to Nantucket, and we didn't have malls, you know. So yeah, when I, I was a kid, it was like that. listening to Radio Disney, and they were like, "Topanga from Boy Meets World is gonna be at the Delamo Mall." Yeah, and like, I was like, that, "Mom, that's, that's near yeah. me. We're going. <laughs> yeah. I need to meet that wasn't Topanga." Even a thought in our mind, like we would watch movies, and be like, "Wow, they're like just when like I started doing mystical, promo, magical like, creatures that don't even exist." I was like, "Nobody's gonna care. Why am I going to this random mall in this random state?" And then there'd be thousands of people and I was like oh it's so weird well hi everybody yeah, like yeah. I had no idea that was a concept yeah I grew up with that that's <laughs> like, crazy yeah uh, but it was, was cool like having been there as like a young kid and then being like the person behind the table and being like well even at like eight years old I was like on the I could already tell I was like on the other side of it and the weirdest part is just like people everyone just knows who you are yeah yeah. I love the story you told me how it's a little weird when like adults. I was going to say, like, what's the average age of people coming up to you at that table when you're signing shit? Like, <laughs> I mean, I remember being eight and like some lady saying, like, want to sign my boob? And I was like, stop yes. it. <laughs> stop right now. I do. Yes, I, I do. Where, I boom. Boom. <laughs> Where the fuck were the adults? Where was anybody? I don't know. Um, you signed the boob? Spy kids, dude. Like, rock star see, lifestyle. I didn't, I didn't see like, I didn't see like. Bear but you signed a chest. It was like yeah, a yeah. chest. Yeah, it was like up here. Yeah, rock you know? star, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Judy Cortez. Yeah. Why am I jealous? <laughs> I hate this woman. <laughs> it's so it's bad. very inappropriate okay, so as very I think about it now. But Jesus. at the time, yeah. Our baby will not be signing no boobies. No, no. Um, anyway, wow. Uh, what the was 2000s. the question? Sorry, I got lost. How did you remember How all your I lines? How did I remember all my Thank lines? Thank you, Sally. Sally Great question, Sally. Um, I don't know. Uh, no. Didn't you I, say he wrote him like on the spot? Not in the first movie. Oh. So yeah. So um, he always it was it's so funny. Like Robert always had all of these ideas, and when we even when we filmed the first movie, he'd be like, "Oh, I have this idea," um, which was also so great as a like first time movie actor of like learning improv. Um, so I would just have to like go with the flow. But uh, remembering all the lines, I don't know. I, I think I'm just really lucky that I, I think I have a, a photographic memory. Um, when I learned how to read, apparently, I just memorized like people telling me like what the story was in the book, and then I just repeated what they said. And, and they were like, "Hey, yeah, it's, it sounded <laughs> like reading. you loved the story and you loved being that character." And, and that's, I feel like, when it comes, it's got to come easiest at that point when you're just like so locked into the world you have to to be in that you're just kind of like. It's just who you are at that point when they're yeah. just like roll. You know yeah. what we should have showed is you as like Poseidon or whatever the fuck you play. Oh, I mean, we, we can <laughs> definitely bring that up. It'll definitely take me like a in. few minutes to find it. But so I can did tell. you really love your character in <laughs> I hated grade. every second of that. <laughs> Ryan was in a play. Fuck, Ryan we was gotta a big find boy. it. <laughs> Ryan was a big boy. And in the play, he was in his chariot. Where, who were you? Uh, I was the sun god. Apollo, Apollo, Apollo you were so, Apollo. so great. Our fourth grade teacher, Mr. Sullivan, amazing. He wrote this entire play for the gods and Greek gods and goddesses, right? Is that what it is? And yeah. For all the was, Greek gods and goddesses I was like, out there. <laughs> yeah. And he played Apollo, and he was in this chariot that they made out of like cardboard. And this poor little sweet girl was pulling Ryan in the <laughs> That was the a chariot. big boy. He was so big, she couldn't do it. And then people started laughing, and he was so mortified. It was like... The rest of the well, week, it was, was because crushed. my friends, like older cousins, were there. They were oh, like yeah, in sixth, sixth grade or eighth grade, maybe. And I was how old were you? Uh, that fourth was fourth grade. grade. Yeah, so they were in eighth grade, and I was like, God damn it, dude! I did not so look cool right now. So embarrassing. So embarrassing. Was that your first um, role? Was yes. Was that your debut? <laughs> that was his first no, stage no, debut. No, we would debut in church. In church, yeah. right? Church church played, yeah. Dad and Thomas was my big role. That was my big time. But role. church is different than school. Um, yeah, yes. church is like because yeah. church was in front of adults. Friends are going, I, yeah. yeah, and the adults the, praise the, you. The school like, players, like, perfect. people are pulling up. It was yeah. a bigger deal. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, it's like, oh my God, who's going to be Dude, doubting Thomas. Unless my eyes fully see. <laughs> I don't remember. Any- oh, I, I blacked out all of church. Believe. I blacked out all of church. I knew that I was a little angel for like three years. I played an angel. Mm-hmm. And then I was like a lamb or something. And then I was a belly dancer. That's when I tapped Ooh. out. I mean, Mentally, I where do you go there. after belly dancer, you know? How do I top <laughs> that? How do you yeah. top, top belly dancer? dancer? And the girl, Chelsea Demby, who is, I don't her name, Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She keeps posting the pics of us, and I'm like, yo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. To Chelsea, if you're listening to this, shirt. if you're listening, Chelsea, stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Chelsea. I love you. No, it's fine. It's actually good stuff. Where the it fuck is, is this we'll, video? Well, you've dude. just we'll watched it. it. Um, Daryl. Yes. So you did Spy Kids 1 and 2. Did you know Spike Kids 2 was happening or was that when they told you like, no, no, so, get okay, ready. so, all right, timeline, uh, Spike Kids 1 comes out March 30th, 2001, I go on this press tour and like in the middle of this press tour and like then I finish up, what was it, third grade or something, <laughs> then it's summer break and basically all summer break we just like packed for going back to Texas again to do Spy Kids 2 and uh, Spy Kids 2 was another six months um, and they're like in that movie, they're like two new spy kids. So mm-hmm. it was just like super exciting that I was going to make like two, two new friends, you know, Emily, Oz- Emily Osmond and Matt O'Leary yeah. and Matt O'Leary, uh, legendary, was legendary. He was in mom's got a date with a vampire Woo-hoo! on Disney channel. Don't know if you know that picture. DCOM. Yeah. You know it. It's so fire. Um, and yeah. And he was kind of like a big bro to me. Um, mom's got a date with a vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You still talk to him, though. All the time. And we saw Emily at the grocery store. We saw her at Gelson's. A couple years ago. Yep. And I was too embarrassed to say hi because I love her. She's amazing. Loved her in Hannah Montana. Yes. Um, And you said hi because I was too shy. Of course. Um, okay. And then okay, oh, okay. Spy Kids 2 did phenomenal. We loved it. Was so, it Selena in that one or no? No, Three. no, no. Sorry. So Spy Kids 2. So the difference between Spy Kids 1 and Spy Kids 2 was like, all right, Spy Kids 1 had come out and it was like everyone knew about it. And now Spy Kids 2... We filmed that movie all over Texas, and then we went to Costa Rica for like oh, a yeah. month. Oh, um, yeah. Because that one has like the volcanoes mm-hmm. and like the slizzards the water. and um, the, beaches. the beaches. Yeah. So we like traveled all around what felt like the world to me, but was just Texas and Costa Rica. <laughs> um, and it was, it was awesome. Um, and for that movie, did you have lines or was he just spitballing them at you? That movie, we had, we had a script the whole time. And uh, Steve Buscemi plays like the mad scientist in that. And now being, Sick. you know, an adult, I'm like, wow, what a legend. I didn't know at nine what a legend Steve Buscemi was. But like just the nicest guy. Everyone again, like I'm so lucky that everyone was so nice. Um, Spike is two came out. Um, Spike is two was with the little creatures. Yeah. the little. I love them so much. Yeah. Now, was there a different vibe on set, though, in Spy Kids 2? Yeah, like, did was you there, roll it, up it, like... Was anybody, like, a little jaded, like... Was it you? Look at us now. Was it me? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I don't, think we, I don't think we were jaded. I don't think we were jaded. Were the adults jaded? <laughs> the adults weren't jaded at all. Everyone was just, like, so pumped that to be to there. And then room. also, like, uh, some of the people that were in the first one, like Cheech Marin, he played... Um, Uncle Felix mm-hmm. and yep. he took off the mustache in the first movie. So in the second movie, like everyone came back, but they brought their families Aww. because it was such like a family movie. Then it was yeah. like, okay, we're going to bring everyone. And honestly, it was like every day on set, we had like water balloon fights or like wow. shooting green fights. Like they made it such a, yeah, you know, it feels like a summer camp. Yeah, exactly. That's so um, cute. We still had to go to school. That, yeah, I was going to say, like, where does school yeah. come into play? So though? school, as a child actor, you have to do three hours of school a day. That's it. So think about that for everyone going to school. Fuck. See, I'm not for sending six my hours. kid. You should have been child I'm actor. not sending my kid to school. <laughs> it's too long. Um, but yeah, so you have to do three hours a day. Uh, and then child actors can only work like eight or nine hours out of the day. So they really only have five hours. So it is a lot of like... Go, go, go. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds then, intense. And then, like, you know, as a kid, you're super happy to be on set because you're not in school. And then, like, as soon as you're done, it's like, oh, back to school. But uh, I realize now, like, that's the time when we're on set and you're, like, in your trailer, like, what? How, why is it taking so long? Like, mm. this takes forever. I was in school. So I didn't know, like, they were uh, setting up for a new shot. And, okay, that's and, like, smart. Yeah. Yeah, I hate yeah. waiting on set. It's hard. Uh, but when you're a kid, you're in school, <laughs> and then yeah. Uh, so the vibe was wasn't really different on the on the second one. Just more people, more okay. eyeballs. Like the first, uh, the second movie opens up, and we're at an amusement park, and that was the Six Flags in Dallas. And like they were 
The he, second movie? The second movie, yeah. Cool. There's a uh That wasn't a that thing called the Gomez? Ju- no, that was Taylor Momsen. She played the president's oh, yeah, daughter. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. From Cindy the Grinch. Noo-hoo. From the Grinch. Isn't that weird? God love her. Uh, but yeah, so we're at Six Flags and there are like fans there while Watching we were filming film the second movie. Were they screaming? How do you get them to shut up? I don't remember. Yeah. I, I don't think they I don't think they did. I think they that everyone was just off, yeah. excited. Um, but like in a world we live in now, like you would see pictures of it online, like back then. Yeah. It was just I like mean, word of mouth, like, hey, TikTok. I heard they're doing a second movie and People be like, no, they're not. It'd literally be mm-hmm. a TikTok. Someone filming you shooting yeah. the scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. So then the second movie came out and more McDonald's toys and stuff. And then and then we did our press tour and it came out. And then like I heard about the third movie from like other child actors who are auditioning for it. And I was like, what? Like, it felt kind of like after the second movie, because... Now, what do you mean? They reached out to you and said, hey, I'm auditioning for Spy Kids 3. And you were like, Yeah, it was like, it was almost like, hey, can you help me get this part, like, in Spy Kids? Like, and I was like, what What are you talking about? You didn't know it was happening. I had no idea that they were doing a third movie after the second movie. It's funny, because wasn't that, like, mostly you in that movie? It it was. And that was the movie that had, um, like, a lot of script changes on the go okay um because the story was changing a lot and um there were a lot of cameos in the third movie and it was like working around everybody's schedule so they could come in yeah um but yeah the third and the third movie uh like if you go back and watch the end of the second movie we're like all a family and we're on this like kind of rocket ship like ufo looking thing we float off i remember in the end of the script of the second movie it was like they float off into the heavens and it's like, oh, wow, that wraps it up. And, like, two adventures done in the bag, and that's it. And then the third movie happens, and then we're in a video game. And it's like years have gone by. They shaved my head. My curls were gone. It was the first time I ever got, like, a serious haircut. I went into, like, cute. physical. Thank you. I went into, like, physical training because I had to be, like, really fit uh, for, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for the third movie. Uh, cause I was like on a green screen the entire time. So they were like, you're going to do training with a yeah. trainer. Yep. I, well, I was in Taekwondo at the time <laughs> and they're like, can the Taekwondo trainer be your trainer and like get you in shape? And I was like, am I out of shape? Okay. Yeah. That's what, mine boggling. I'm trying to remember who my stunt double was. I feel like I did most of my own stunts on the third movie. Because we were just in one location. Yeah. And that was the one that Selena Gomez was in, Spy Kids 3. Thank you. Because the only location that we went to on Spy Kids 3 was the water park in Texas called Schlitterbahn. And it was like winter time. It was closed. And Selena was her first movie. Gomez. Selena Gomez. Um, Did you love her? Uh, she was very sweet. I Did you have a crush on her? Recogn- I met her for one day, a couple hours. You're like, wow, she's the one. Um, just what a cutie. That's all I'll say. And I'm pretty sure I was like, you look familiar because she was on Barney. And I was, was a big I was a big Barney fan growing up. Same. Um, and yeah. And then the whole rest of the movie was on a green screen. And then like all the characters there are like other characters in that movie in the video game. And they all came in, like flew in to Texas to do their screen tests. So I would like read scenes with them. And I didn't know like who their characters were. Uh, what my relationship was to them, like, like how they even fit into this video game, and like kids would just come in, I'd read with them, and then they'd go, and then at the end of like a couple days, they had like their new cast of kids. Oh, didn't you have a love interest in this one? And I had a, and What's yeah, it was the me? first time I had a love interest. Who is she? Her name's Courtney Giants. Awesome. Was she friendly? Yeah, the best. Every again, everyone on, nice. on those movies were so nice. I was really rooting for you guys. In that movie. Didn't we make it? Did we not make it? You made it. I but I was just like, good for you. He's mine. She did. <laughs> you <laughs> really, you were crazy? watching those and you were like, that, that's my man? No. Um, Get the fuck out no. of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I want to be best friends with him. I don't know. I wasn't like yeah. turned on by guys at all at that age. I was like so young. I was just like, boys are icky ew, you know? <laughs> Did you guys see the third movie in the theater, like with the glasses and everything, or did you wait really until have it came on? on we didn't DVD. have like we watched everything on DVD. DVD. Yeah. 
Yeah, Damn, sorry, guys. but it was we fine. Didn't we didn't know the luxury so. of that. You know, now we now we know. Yeah, now we know we love. I'm pretty sure the first time we do, it, we're like, "This sucks. I'm sick." Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I gotta pee. You can't pause it. Yeah, yeah, that's my. That's the one thing I hate about going to movie theaters. I'm like, I know no, I'm gonna. We miss had a, a movie chunk. theater. We just didn't have like 3D movies. Right. You know. Well, oh yeah. yeah, we had a little <laughs> tiny shack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that was like the first. I mean, like all the movie, honestly, in 3D looked like kind of silly, and because they had the red and blue glasses. Yeah. Um. And then oh, yeah. wasn't um, the guy from the famous movie, Lord of the Rings, wasn't he in it? He made a cameo in it, which I was super excited about that. Elijah Wood, Frodo Baggins. Tell us the truth. Was what? he wonderful? Oh, he, yeah. <laughs> he was. You okay. have no tea. You're so bad. Wait, wait, wait. I'll tell you some tea on that. <laughs> okay, okay so tea. it was my first experience. Like, you know, there are, there, Sylvester Stallone's in that movie. You know, okay. there are like big stars in that yeah. movie. Superstars, and superstars. as a kid, like... Honestly, at 10, I didn't know what Rocky was. So, you know, to everyone else, even Antonio Banderas, I knew Zorro. So I was really excited. He signed, like, my Zorro VHS on the first movie. But all the other amazing actors, Steve Buscemi and, you know, Bill Paxton, um, I didn't know. Uh, Elijah Wood, it was rumored to be, like, coming on set for a day. And I'd seen all the Lord of the Rings movies. I I had a ring. The special effects you people. had a ring. I had a ring. I had the, the ring. I had the <laughs> ring because the special effects people who did Spy Kids also did Lord of the Rings. So you like, had the actual. Oh, ring? you had a real. You I had the, the ring. The oh, that's ring. sick. On a chain that, like, you're wearing your chain now. Yeah, I yeah. would wear that at ten every single day to set, just like gangster. Like, Stop. I got my Lord of the Rings that's ring fire. on. That's fire. I have to find it, but you never told um, me that. Yeah, so I had the ring, and then. Uh, one day on set, everyone was like really quiet and serious, and they're like, "Elwood's come to set. Elwood's come to set." And I was like, "Elwood, uh, Elwood? Who, is that? Is that Elijah Wood?" And then when I asked, they were like, "Hey, just so you know, you can't look at him. You can't talk to him. He's just coming in real quick. You're just gonna do the scene, and he's gonna go." Wow. And I was like, "Fuck that! I can't wait." <laughs> and like, I ran to my trailer. I put on my ring. I saw like a black car come up, and I like opened the door, and I was like, "Hi." John Daryl, I got the ring right here, and I'm Stop such a big fan. It. And he, he was the coolest guy. He was so nice, um, <laughs> so cool. And he was like, "Wow, that's amazing!" And then like we went on set together, and like um, we did our scene really quickly, and and then like he went <laughs> off into the heavens, and <laughs> and then like randomly one time I saw him again on a plane. I was flying back from JFK to LAX, and I had like a bunch of homework to do. And I'm sitting in first class and there was nobody sitting next to me. And for some reason, like I remember on set, Elijah Wood was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to move to New York. So I'm sitting on this plane years later looking next to me. and I'm like, huh, I wonder if Elijah Wood ever moved to New York. And then as soon as I finished that thought, Elijah Wood came on the plane, sat down next to me. Wow. And I didn't do any of my homework and we watched Eight Mile together. And it was awesome. That's the craziest, coolest story ever. Yeah. Oh, and then legend. he went off into the heavens of yeah. LAX. Okay, so you're yeah. like 10, 9, peaking in life, right? Pe- peaking, yeah. Just I'm like peaking, living I your mean, best life. Yeah, at the time. I'm peaking. Then, well, it sounds like a lot of work. So you just sat. You're, no, it's a lot of work. It was, yeah. it was like, you know, five years, really. Of that was your just, childhood. Was Spy was, Kids. Yeah. Like five years nonstop of, of, just, of just Spy Kids. And I lived in California, but we shot the movies in Austin, Texas. And it was like back and forth, back and forth. And then in between shooting the movies, like they took us to London and and France. And uh, we went to, you know, went all around the country and um, just promoted the shit out of the movie. And, you know, like all those interviews that you do where they ask you the same questions over and over and over again, like those suck. (laughs) Because <laughs> you know what it's, they are. Yeah. And like as a kid, you just get so bored. Oh my like God. now it's fun to watch like all these awesome actors do these press junkets because they just like everything's now a prank. It's like, all right, right. how can they make it interesting for Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds when yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. just bored? Over it. You know? 10 hours later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when did yeah. you do the Polar Express? Polar a lot Ex- of people, I don't think, know this because I didn't fucking know this till like a year dating you. Polar Express was another movie that, like, I auditioned for years before they started filming it. I think I auditioned for it when I was, like, nine after Spy Kids 2. And uh, because Polar Express was, like, one of the first movies to do uh, what they call mocap, motion capture, um, it, like, was a long process, like, getting that technology there. So I auditioned for the hero boy, was his name, for the little boy in the blue robe. And, like... 
auditioned when I was nine and then like didn't hear anything. And then in the middle of sp shooting Spy Kids 3, they were like, hey, uh, you got the part. Can you be in LA on these dates? And they conflicted with Spy Kids 3. So I couldn't like fly back to LA. I couldn't do two movies at once. Um, so then apparently they were like, you know what? We're just going to have Tom Hanks like do the body motion, Movement, the yeah. motion capture for the boy. And then, um, and then Josh Hutcherson uh, was like the stand in when Tom Hanks was doing all the other characters, like the conductor and Santa Claus and stuff like that. Um, so it could have been me one once upon a time, but Josh Hutcherson was a stand in. And then when um, they were like doing uh, the technology stuff, what am I saying? The voice when they were when they were like in post production for the movie, getting everything together, they tried to pitch Tom Hanks's voice up to sound like a little boy. And they just didn't like uh, the director just didn't like how it sounded. So they brought me in to do the voice. And so then that's how I became the voice of the hero boy in the Polar Express. Was that your first time Whoop. voice acting? Uh, I think it was. That's I, insane. I think it was. Because um, now you yeah. still do voiceovers. And the last biggest gig that Hillary Duff thought was really cool was Ben 10. Ben 10. Yeah, it was, I was um, Heat Blast. Heat Blast on Ben 10. Heat Blast on Ben 10. Ben 10. And now you know. Uh, so yeah, no, sick. I've done, I, I, ever since Polar Express, it actually like opened up a lot of yeah, doors for yeah. voice acting and voice acting is amazing. Voice actors are incredible. Like it's so fun. We are our old house. We lived next to a bunch of really talented voice actors oh, yeah, we did. who came from radio and, um, but voice acting is super fun because you can kind of go there and be super corny and cheesy and not worry about yeah, it. Yeah, you can be no extra. One's, no one's filming your face. Right. Um, so you can use, you know, your body and stuff and go nuts. Um, which is sometimes hard to go from voice acting to then like, like on camera acting. Cause you have to remember like, all right, I gotta chill out. Gotta calm down. Yeah. When I do auditions with you, when I read with you, I'm like, my first yelling. hit, my first takes are always, <laughs> I'm like, you're loud. If you just do it, like you I don't just have care. so much energy. I just gotta yeah. get it out. You know? <laughs> it's like, I'm like, this isn't a play. <laughs> it's my process. I'm going to scream every yeah, line yeah. real yeah. quick yeah. and then I'm we'll like, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> But you're wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then I, a lot of people don't know because like I didn't know any of this. So I just want to make sure they know too because uh, I'm your number one fan. You were the first murder that Mike. Michael Myers. Michael on Myers Halloween. committed on Halloween. Rob Zombie did a prequel of the Halloween movies. And uh, yeah. And then I was like the bully who bullied kid Michael Myers. And technically I think I'm his first kill. Death by Tree Branch. Yeah. Um, that movie was super fun because that was the first time that I got to play like a dickhead. So you're it was very like, good at playing a dick, which is crazy because you. you're so nice. Thank you. Uh, you're an angel. It's so thanks. funny. That's how I know. I'm like, oh, he's a really good actor because the character you play on that and, and in uh, World's Greatest Dad, World's Greatest Dad yeah. Yeah. makes me hate. I was <laughs> cracking up. I was like, fucking spy kid is an asshole. Yeah. Dude, if you haven't seen World's Greatest Dad with <laughs> oh, Robin Williams yeah. and my hubby, it is it's one of the greatest really movies of all time. Fucked it's very up, great dark, movie. so prepare yeah. yourself. Thank you. But the acting that you accomplished in that movie is... In World's Greatest Dad? Yeah. Should I tell that audition story? Yeah. So World's Greatest Dad, uh, directed by Bobcat Goldthwait, comedian. Um, I read the script. I loved the script. And my audition for the movie was to play the best friend in the movie. And I like called my agent at the time. And I was like, who's playing the son? And they were like, oh, nobody. They're going to go out to somebody. Who knows? And I was like, well, can I audition for the son? And my agent was like, no. And I was like, mm. and also like, I didn't, I never take no for an answer like very well. So when he said no, I was like, oh, I'm going out for the sun. Okay. Um, I got the sides. Uh, you can like, you could like find sides like on this website and download them. So wow. um, yeah. Uh, so I got the sides for the sun roll. I learned the part that I had the audition for just in case, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, Go for it. I think it was like my first time. I was 15 and I was like learning about method acting. I had this book by Lee Strasberg called The Method. And like that's uh, method acting is like Daniel Day Lewis. You know, he like yeah, really, yeah. really gets his. Live your character yeah, exactly. daily. So I also like at the time as a teenager after Spy Kids, I had like a dilemma in my head of like, do I go in these rooms? Because I'd be I, like, a lot of people knew me as, as Junie, you know, as Spy Kids kid. Um, and so I went in the room and I was like, do I just like be myself and then show them like I could 
turn into this character and like be an actor. And I did that for a lot of years. I don't think it was the right move, but you know what? We can't change that now. So that's what I did. But for some reason, world's greatest dad, the character was so like, unlike myself that I was like, it's going to be really hard for me to go in and be like, hi guys, my name's Daryl. Good night to meet you. (laughs) Um, You know, and then, and then be like this mean kid. So um, there were a couple things. Uh, I knew the casting directors. I was like taking a chance, but it was like a safe chance for me. So I knew the casting directors. They had cast me in, in Wizards of Waverly Place with Selena Gomez and like in an yeah, indie film. Yeah, we missed a bunch of things. Ruth and Robert, I love you. Um, and then the director, Bobcat Goldthwait's a comedian. So I'm like, all right, he can take a joke. Um, so I went in there just as, the, as I thought the character would be, uh, Kyle. And I just like didn't really look at anybody. I kind of was just like walked in like a piece of shit and... Um, was just mean they were like do you want to read the character and i was like i actually think this character is kind of stupid i'd rather read this other character and uh if you don't want me to read kyle then i i guess it's just a waste of my time i can just leave <laughs> and everyone kind of sat there and like i saw the, the casting balls. directors just like look at each other and they kind of smiled at each other and i, I knew like all right cool they know i'm <laughs> but the director was like um okay i guess you could read <laughs> kyle and so I'm, I'm like, you know, trying to be cool, like sh- not shaking, not shaking. I hand them the sides and then like I read with the casting directors. I was so nervous after I like I did it uh, that I was like, you know, I actually I know the other part if you need me to read the other part. And he and then Bobcat was like, no, thanks. I'm, I'm good. Um, thank you for your time. And I left. And after leaving, I was like, what an idiot. I messed up. <laughs> like, why did I do that? And uh, I heard nothing for a week. So like seven days went by and I was Jesus. just in my head, you know, like, fuck, like that was a movie with Robin Williams. I fucked it up. Like, I'm not going to ever have that chance. And then I got a phone call to meet with Bobcat in person uh, and not read any lines, just like talk. And so then I was kind of thinking like, oh, OK, well, may- maybe this is like, you know, time for me to redeem myself. I sat down with him and he just looked at me for like it felt like forever. And he was like, so you're fucking with me? <laughs> And I was like, probably like, he's really sweet. And I was like, yes, yes. Uh, And then I was just myself and I'm like, I'm really sorry. I just didn't think you'd believe me if I came in and just like introduced myself. So I just thought that was the only way that you would believe me. And he was like, no, no, I've I've kind of been background checking you for a week and everyone says that you're nice and I just don't want to work with an asshole for six weeks. And I'm like, I promise, I promise. And then uh, he was like, yeah, can you, you know, be on a flight to Seattle in two days? And I was like, yeah. And oh, the next man. day we shot the, the school photo in World's Greatest Dad. You know, I have that like stupid look on my face. They held up a picture of Che Guevara and they were like, try to redo that. Wow. And so that's my Che Guevara impression. And then the next day I flew to Seattle. I was in Seattle for like two months uh, doing that movie. That movie was awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's really good acting. They just believed that you were a piece of shit. Yeah. They're like, hey, we're just making sure you're not a scumbag. What was really like, fun, an asshole. what was really fun was the, uh, that movie screened for the first time at Sundance. And um, it was like really fun to watch people's reaction to that character. Like and, you when you walked in? Huh? Well, like it just in the, in the movie. Oh. Like when, like how you watched the movie. Yeah. You know, and like when we, we watched it. Fight. You were like, I hate you. Yeah. I you know? fucking hate you. And <laughs> what was awesome was I think I was like 16 at the time and I got the dirtiest looks from people <laughs> after the movie ended. Like I was in the audience and then uh, like walking out of the theater. Everyone like was how just could lo- you be looking. so mean to Every, Robin everyone, everyone was looking at me like, oh God, like you're disgusting. <laughs> and I remember just like having the biggest smile on my face. Like, oh my God. Like, and then when I did press for the movie at Sundance, like they would ask Robin questions and they would ask Bobcat questions and then Robin and Bobcat would go, well, do you have any questions for Daryl? And they're like, no. <laughs> oh my God. And then after, after like the interview was over, they were like, you know, he, he he's not like that in real life. Right. Oh. And they were like, I'm sorry. We're just like, don't have anything to say to you. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Nothing anyway, to say to you. Interviews are much better when they don't ask you any questions. You yeah. just yeah. sit there and listen. You just kick it. Yeah. I also forgot my favorite, one of my favorite things you ever achieved. <laughs> <laughs> this I is just like trophy. the Daryl Sabana oh, career. I feel great. Sorry, well, like, it's all about child acting. Oh, so um, yeah, then <laughs> under 18? No, Willie, right? yeah. Grace, and Friends. Two of yeah. the biggest sitcoms ever. Yeah. You were on both of them. True. Yeah. Um, Period. Luck, At enough. young age. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, Will and Grace was before Spy Kids. I was six. 
and Crazy. like we just watched that at home all the time so i was just stoked i was like a really small character i was like one of like 10 kids in a classroom you were broccoli um, and yeah they were doing a play called stone soup and they put me in a broccoli outfit and i had like two lines and um but didn't being you say so, like girls are icky or something i said girls are icky and then will high fives me and he's like right at you right back at you Mm -hmm. um and didn't understand that joke at the time <laughs> um but uh it was like the first time that i was on a show that i had watched so it was like my first experience of like watching the tv wow. and then being in the tv and Even being like able to see myself when you're acting that character you're like girls are icky oh, like, yeah. you're just so well, happy that's also multi-cam live audience yeah and that's why i'm so excited if you know the show that that you're creating goes because it's just a fun it's just I'm a, to it's a party. Come. Yeah. Yeah, it's a party. I want to hear about like public school. Like obviously you have to go to it a little bit. I do. Like you, you do all this like Hollywood shit and everyone's like fucking kissing your toes, treating you like a god, and then you have to go to public school where it was not like that at, at, at all. Well, you also have to remember that I was fucking twenty years ago when yeah. we don't you didn't know how like now it's so like glamorized being famous right you know and there's a whole different I think it was back then too though like in a different way though you didn't hear about it the second it happened you know it's like now when someone's famous they did a video yesterday and then today oh, they're oh, famous oh. you know it's like even so you were still even as a kid actor and doing spy kids i had years and years of years of auditioning and not getting it you know like those mcdonald's commercials three years in a row of like auditioning and then not getting it and then you know, and then you get one thing and then it feels like, oh, I'm going to get everything now. Um, and you still don't. Um, but you have like that one thing that you can talk about. I know that feeling. Um, yeah. When I got the Grammy, I was like, oh, everything's going yeah. up for me. And I was like, why is it harder? <laughs> it, I mean, it, it, that I would say is the biggest mind fuck out of, of everything. All yeah. of it um, that you can't really explain to anyone until they go through it, yeah. even today. Um, but like people kissing my feet and stuff like that, like it never felt like that. I always kind of just felt like a kid. Okay. Um, the difference was when I was not in school, I was around adults the whole time and child actors also kind of act like adults. Like they don't act like yeah, it's kids. Creepy. And then I went to public school and that's where kids act like kids. And, uh. um, and then being like, not like a target in a way, but kind of, you know, just being a recognizable kid that people, it's hard for kids to understand, like seeing you on a movie and then seeing you in real life. And it's like, wait, that's it's not, separating the, it's not the, the same. Two. Like you're not a spy in real life. So the amount of questions as a kid of like, are you a spy? <laughs> and having Shut like up. me having to be like, no. And I'm like, sorry. they're almost like, <laughs> no. they're almost like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. what do you mean you're not a spy? You know, wait, tell the story when the principal announced that you were coming. That was late. That was, that was later on. Uh, that was after three Spy Kids movies. Just like I was having to do press for Spy Kids two or three, and uh, it was in it was Spy Kids three. It was fifth grade. Uh, in fifth grade, at the end of the year, they take you on a field trip to the middle school, so you know like what your middle school is gonna look like. And so uh, we went. I went with my fifth grade class, and then all the fifth graders this one day have recess with all of the middle schoolers, and somehow like word got around that I was gonna be there and uh during recess like i just like kind of got mobbed in a way of like a bunch of kids from like all six seven eighth graders like coming up being like yo like are you a millionaire like can you give me some money and no i way. was like no i'm not no i don't have money <laughs> you know and um i then like some kid like tried to pants me and it didn't quite work so Aww. then they were like they kept trying i'm like i didn't even know what pantsing was at 10 so i was just Jesus kind of like Christ. why are people tugging on my clothes like trying to take no. my pants off and so i just kind of like went to the principal's office like made my way over to the principal's office and was like hey can i like just sit in here because it's like kind of a mess out there and like a teacher saw and stuff like that so they they helped me in there um and so i kind of sat in the uh principal's office uh and i was supposed to leave like after the field trip to go home because i had to get on a flight to philly to do this show trading spaces where they redecorate your home but they had like a kids version so because i they like kept me in the principal's office for so long um the uh, and back in the day, they did send limos. Um, the like stretch limo came to the school. So and, like, embarrassing. My bags were packed. <laughs> but it was like, I mean, it was like in a way because like at school, I just was a normal kid. 
And when they ask you questions like, do you have a mansion? Like, are you a millionaire? And I, my answer would be no. It's then confusing to then see a stretch limo come up to the school yeah. after this kid didn't give you the money that you asked for. And then it's fucking limo shows up. <laughs> You know, um, decked out. And so I had to like leave the school in a stretch limo and all the a kids. A white are, limo, right? I don't remember what color. Oh, I think, I don't know. But all the kids are like, you know, on the fence, like, whoa, crazy. And then I had to go to work, you know? So it was. So bizarre, dude. Yeah, yeah I got pantsed a few times, but I was aware of the pantsing. Yeah. You know? I can't imagine just being yeah. pantsed, being like, is, what is this thing? What yeah. is happening here? Yeah. It's very very strange. Very strange. But yeah. yeah. What was um, your favorite part about being a child actor? The free shit. And meeting a lot your of heroes. Free shit. <laughs> no, just the free shit. Yeah. <laughs> like Daryl. <laughs> uh, uh, no, my favorite part about being a child actor. Let me, uh, uh, I, I mean, honestly, like all the people I got to meet, all the, all the traveling I got to do. Like I, even though I went to public school, I felt like I had an amazing education just because I got to travel the world. Yeah, and you got meet, to see the world. There's nothing people. like that. So it's like, you know, in public school, and honestly, that's why school is just kind of annoying for me. It was like, I felt like I was in this box. And I was like, Trump. I know what's outside this box, and it's way cooler yeah. than what's inside this box. Aww. Like, let me out. Um, which is why <laughs> which is why work was awesome because I always got to like, that's when I got to be myself. It's weird. It's like when I was in school, I didn't feel like I could be myself. Um, because I had to like follow, Couldn't you know. Yeah, I guess you were just surrounded by adults. So like you just grew up way faster than kids. Like that are I, just going to uh, this is so random, but I, I remember like I've been always been interested in like ghosts and spirits and all that Me stuff. Too. And I remember on Spy Kids 1, um, Alan Cumming who played Floop, we were like waiting on set one day and I think I asked him, I'm like, where do you think people go after they die? And like, that's a really heavy question for a seven year old to ask an adult that they don't know very well. And it's scary for an adult to like answer the question. And he was like, I don't know. What do you think? And I'm like, well, I think we come back as like, uh, you know, I, I think we get reincarnated and like we come back as other people. And he was like, wow, that's, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, me too. And, um, and I couldn't talk about that kind of stuff in school. You know, it's like, you can't ask those questions to your teacher and have a conversation. Right. About that. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. The end. I get <laughs> Told you any, it was any, any uh, advice you would have to um, a child actor or, you know, maybe someone thinking about going that or route. Or the parents or, or the, the child. Or to the parents, any <laughs> advice? Uh, too scared to give parents advice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> other than, like, don't force it. Yeah. They don't want to do it. Don't make them do it. Yeah. Um, and then... For the kids, like, I mean, honestly, for the kids and the parents, just like, it's about having fun. Yeah. And, if you're not having fun, don't do it. Yeah. And I got really lucky that like all my jobs were really fun. Um, I still can't think of a job that I've had to do up till now that I was like, man, that wasn't fun. Like I've also, always, can I say you were like one of the turtles or something and, and, um, <laughs> Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. I'm yeah, bragging. A, no, no, no. Well, that was after it's Polar. The IMBD of Daryl Sabara. <laughs> <laughs> that was after Polar Express. That was like a door opened and like, oh, I just burped. All right. There's a bunch of uh, kids that like get in these like voiceover groups that uh, it's called like ADR. So like for Finding Nemo, they had a bunch of like school scenes with all the school fish and then the turtle scenes. And so they just get a bunch of kids to come in and like fill up the room. And so I was one of those kids and, um, you know, it's like you say hundreds of lines during like this three day period and you don't know what they're going to pick and what they're not going to pick. So you kind of have to wait till the movie comes out and then like, you know, watching the movie, I'm like, oh, that was me. Like, that's wow. cool. Um, what was really cool about that experience though, is that director, Andrew Stanton, who directed Finding Nemo later directed a movie that I was in called John Carter. And, um, like... I feel like I got that John Carter movie just from like the experience that I had doing with him like a couple gig. days when I was 11 wow. doing Finding Nemo. That's a trip. Yeah. We have questions from, from fans. Um, Colin Horvath. I hope I said that right. I have a question for Daryl on Spy Kids. How did the finger people actually look? Also, Daryl, what was your favorite scene to act in? Um, that's a broad question. The finger people, I'm guessing he means the thumb thumbs. The thumb people. The thumb, the thumb thumb. thumbs. Uh, in the first movie, they changed as the movies went on. They became computer generated. But in the first movie, it was a dude in a costume. 
And so it was like, so you dude. actually saw the thumb person, the thumb person, like actually like walked around. Wow. And Did it haunt your nightmares? And, and then nail. No, that's the thing. It's so crazy. Like as a kid, like it was so fun. Even the Fuglies, like, even though they look really scary, Terrifying. like as a kid, like I saw the guys who went in the suits. So I knew okay. it wasn't real, you okay. know? Okay. And like the thumb thumbs, the nail was like mesh so they could breathe and wow. like see and stuff, which you can't see on camera. But like when they're holding you and you're like this close to them, you can see their faces. Um, and so, yeah, so that's how the thumb thumbs worked in the first movie. And then I think they got computer generated later on cause it wasn't a fun costume to be in. And then my favorite scene to film, um, in the first movie, we, we, we play the robot versions of ourselves. And I asked every single day, cause they told us in the beginning of filming, like when you play the robot version of yourself, they're going to cement you with silly string. So every day I came on set, like Is today, the day we get to do silly string. And they're like, not today. And the day that we did the silly string was the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the simple uh, things. Yeah. Uh, you love silly string when you're a kid. Um, cause you don't have to clean it up. And then, yeah, uh, that's it. <laughs> Okay. The, the other movies were great too, but gorgeous. Bridget B eighteen said, "What's your favorite role that you've ever played?" By the way, Megan, can you say hi, Bridget? <laughs> hi, Bridget. Sup, Bridget. Sup. Uh, my favorite, favorite role, role that I've ever ever played, I think, will will have to be uh, Kyle and yeah. World's Greatest Dad. Hell so yeah. much fun. Um, Robin was the best, and uh, yeah, I just got to like go there and uh, be free. With one of your heroes. With my hero, yeah. And then, Sounds of like... course, we gotta mention it. Thoughts oh. on the potential Netflix on the reboot. Reboot. On the reboot. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what they do with the franchise. Because honestly, Robert, same director. Same director. Um, Robert's doing it. Um, I honestly, you know, this isn't me being a spy. Like I really don't know anything about <laughs> it. Um, and not haven't, spy guy. haven't got a call. Um, no, no calls yet, but you know, I know everyone over there in that camp is really secretive and like, True. they don't really let anything out until the last minute. Um, but no matter what happens, like I'm, I can't believe that people love the movies as much as they do and that they'd even want to reboot it. Like that's super cool. Uh, love Netflix. Um, Netflix, we love you. Yeah. And uh, I'm excited to see, <laughs> yeah, what happens next. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And Trust you it. should be in it. They should. They yeah, should probably be in it. Okay. Uh, He's great. Okay. Well, I love you guys. Love you. Thank I you guys. You. That was what a great. What a great therapy set. What a great walk down memory lane for me. I learned a lot. Holy shit! <laughs> really? It just keeps going. Yeah, you did a ton of stuff. Holy. He, fuck. Did, he did even more. I just can't remember right now. Oh, the go doctor, to his IMBD. Doctor <laughs> Show. Really? Okay. We all have it. He was on all house. Right. Yeah. All okay. right. All right. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you yeah, for watching. Thank you. thank you for being you and experiencing we working love on you. a podcast. We, we love, love you all so much. We read all your comments. Um, we read all your DMs. <laughs> I do, and mommy does. My mom reads them. Um, so be uh, nice. Yeah, working on a pod, all socials and Megan Turner's YouTube. Also, Y'all blew up that TikTok with me and Remy talking about Yeah, dude, about you know, underwear. we have fucking phenomenal conversations with Dr. Phil, Dr. Drew. But that the one shit blows that up. pops off is Megan doesn't wear a thong, dude. That's where we're at in society, <laughs> huh? That's so any more also, of those clickbait stuff. Can I we say all think. the comments were like, finally, someone admitted that. That finally. is true. I guess and it's relatable. Like, Thank you for saying it. Megan understands. Megan knows. I wow, guess. Megan seems really down to earth. Wow, Megan's the fucking Okay, geek. I guess you read them all. Psycho. All right. <laughs> I love y'all. Thanks Thank for supporting you, me. Thanks Thank you, Daryl, again for doing this. This is fucking awesome. We love you. You're love the best guy ever. Goodbye. Goodbye. Working on, working on.